nature not I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things and I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case open and shut no doubt about it I'm a nature nut today we'll go bird watching tomorrow we'll catch toads the next day we'll take photographs of bugs along the road I never get the feeling that I'm in a rut that's why I'm a nature nut Well, I'm a nature nut I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things And I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case Open and shut No doubt about it I'm a nature nut Well, hello there, nature nuts How's it going? Is it hot enough for you? Have you seen any Gila monsters? I was just up the trail here. A woman told me she saw a Gila monster just this morning, which is great news because today is lizard day. I think lizards are fantastic creatures. And I must admit, you know, where I live, there, there are no lizards. So we had to come south to find some. And why not go to one of the most lizardy places in all of North America, the Sonoran Desert. So here we are, just outside Tucson, Arizona, yeah, looking for lizards in the land of the saguaro cactus. It's beautiful here, it's really warm, and that's what lizards like. Before we get any further, let's just review a basic fact. Lots of people confuse lizards and salamanders. Lizards, they have dry, scaly skin, and they live all of their life on land. Salamanders, they have smooth, kind of moist skin, and they live part of their life, at least, in the water. Lizards are reptiles, salamanders are amphibians. Okay, out of the way, done with the technical stuff. Now, let's go find some lizards. There are about 3,500 species of lizards on Earth as compared to about 2,500 species of snakes. Okay, there's a lizard over there. It's sunning on a rock. It's kind of a small brownish lizard, but what kind of lizard is it? Well, it's not that easy to identify lizard species, but it's a lot of fun. It's like anything else. You know, you get more out of your lizard watching if you can, if you can recognize what kind of lizard it is that you have in front of you. So, to give you the basics of it, let's review, instead of the species, let's review the big groups of lizards, the lizard families. There are not that many families, and here we have representatives of the major groups of plastic lizards, and the families of plastic lizards correspond very closely with the families of real lizards. The geckos are a very popular, familiar group and most people know what a gecko is. They, most people don't know that a gecko is a lizard. It's just a kind of a lizard. And the majority of geckos that we're familiar with have big, sticky, sort of flat toes, and they can walk right up walls. They come out at night. They have strange pupils in the eye. Some geckos don't have those features. They're out uh, on the ground, and they don't have the big toes. But that's your basic gecko look with the, with the cool feet. The big family, the one that has the greatest diversity here in North America, is the iguana family. And all of these fellows here on these two rocks represent iguana family lizards. And iguana family lizards, they range from little tiny ones all the way up to great big ones. And that one we are looking at to begin with, it's part of the iguana family as well. And some of them are just very lizardy looking, others are so cool, things like the horned toads or horny toads. They're really lizards, and people who know about lizards, they always call them horned lizards. But why bother? The rest of the world is just going to call them horny toads. Now, how about this family down here? That's intended to represent a skink. Skinks are very smooth lizards. They, uh, they generally have quite short legs. And I think skinks are really quite neat. I've met a lot of women who don't like skinks for some reason. I, apparently it's not the case down here. The women in Arizona like skinks, but the women back up in Canada don't like skinks, and I don't know why that is. They prefer whip tails and race runners, which are like skinks, except a little bit more sleek, fast-moving kind of lizards. 
race runners. And then, of course, there are other lizard families, the alligator lizards, the night lizards. It goes on and on. Very interesting subject. When I was a kid, you know, the your average plastic lizard didn't look much like a real lizard at all, but now they're so accurate, I even know one university professor who uses them in lab exams instead of specimens in formaldehyde. It's pretty easy to cheat, though. You just look on the bottom of the lizard, it says, Desert Iguana. You'd have to file that off before you use them in the exam. Anyway, there you go, families of lizards. Now we're ready to get out and find some. Oh, sorry about that guy. Now isn't this a bonus? I didn't even mention this family of lizards because there's only two members and they're the only venomous lizards in the world. This is a Gila monster and we were just driving, hey, relax, dude. We were just driving along trying to make a show about scorpions and here's a Gila monster crossing the road in the desert. It's early in the morning and have a look at this guy. We actually saw two of them. There was another one back a little ways. He's a little bit upset with me but a very heavy lizard with uh, beaded scales. The other member of the family lives in Mexico called a beaded lizard. Nice big forked tongue, black and orange coloration to warn other animals that it's a venomous thing. It can really hurt them. But it's a slow moving thing. It's like a skunk. It doesn't have to worry about much because it knows that it's well protected. They shouldn't really call them monsters though. It's a lizard, Gila lizard. That's what I'd call it if it was up to me. Okay, dude, back to the desert. See you later. Our Gila monster was soon tucked under a rock and we got a good look at its beaded skin. In every bead, there is a tiny bone scale inside the skin itself. The lizard was still agitated with me and it flicked its tongue out often. It's an organ for smelling despite its scary appearance. Lizards are not closely related to dinosaurs. Crocodiles and birds are much closer. This is a big moment for me. This is the first time I've ever seen a collared lizard in the wild. This is a quite a large member of the iguana family. And look, I mean, just look at this thing. Look at that color, turquoise with spots and a golden head. Big head, big jaw muscles. This guy will even eat other lizards. It's obviously living a rough life. It's got a cactus spine in its chin. I feel kind of sorry for it. I don't know how it'll get that spine out. Oh, and did you see when he got up on his hind feet like that? I don't know if that's because he was getting too warm on the rock or whether he's, uh, you know, trying to get a better look at me. But let me tell you, I mean, this is lizard watching at its very best. Good looking lizard. Lizard looks at life. Lizard.
grabs a fat old bug, flashy as a knife. The last time I saw a cactus, I think it was in a dream. He the monsters danced around. Think of home Postcards to the relatives From a lizard on the road I used to go a woman Geckos were her thing She hung around in places Geckos go in the evening Skillet Lizard comes along Lizard comes along Along comes a lizard And a lizard comes along Along Okay, well, let's talk about lizard behavior for a minute here. Now, the best lizard behavior always happens when you've got lots of lizards together, but it doesn't mean that a single lizard can't do some neat things, too. We've got, now I think this is a greater earless lizard. I could be wrong. I'm learning a lot about lizards here myself. But let's just watch it for a bit now that we've identified it. We've noticed the fact that it has no ear openings and there's some kind of racing stripes up by the back leg there. The main thing that you'll see lizards doing, especially in the morning, is basking. Because lizards do a lot of stuff to keep their body temperature at the right level. It's, uh, it's called thermoregulation. It means they're regulating the, uh, you know, the therms, the temperatures. And that's what this guy is doing. He's sitting on the rock, soaking up the rays. Not just for the sake of a good tan or anything like that, but because these lizards are cold-blooded in the, in the sense that they don't develop body heat from within. They have to regulate their body temperature by, uh, by warming up in their environment. So there you go, basking. Pretty obvious, pretty uh, boring in a sense, but you know, it's a very important for the lizard. Oh, and there we go. See, I told you to do something else. Now it's doing a little bit of display. See that? It's sort of a, you know, push-up kind of thing. That's called head bobbing, and it's a display that they do to other lizards. It's usually either a courtship display or it's a, it's a little intimidation display between territorial lizards trying to get their, uh, their rivals out of the territory. And, oh, oh, did you see that? Did you see that? The dewlap. They have a little flap of skin on the throat, especially in the iguana family, and this is part of the iguana family, and it stretches that flap of skin out, and there's a little, I can't, you know, quite do that here, but there's a, some color, a little bit of orange color in these, and that's part of the display too. It gives them a kind of a, you know, colorful, big headed look. Oh, there he goes again. This species doesn't just run away from you, it waves that striped tail because if you're a predator, you'd probably grab at that obvious big flag 
the striped tail flag and then the tail would of course break off and you'd be left with the tail while the lizard runs to safety and starts growing a new tail which will be finished in a couple of months. And there you go. I mean, that's, that's uh, an introduction to lizard behavior. Remember to watch them after you've identified them. Some lizards give birth to live young, others lay eggs, and some don't even need males to reproduce. So now let me tell you a story. The legend of the wacky lizard scientist who found it difficult to catch desert lizards. He tried and tried and failed every time, and finally he had an idea. Why not lure them into the open with fly fishing gear? So he got himself some flies. This one's a Latort hopper. And he got himself a fishing vest and filled it up with all sorts of fishing doodads. Then he got himself a creel to put his lizards in. And off he went into the desert where he began casting for lizards. Sure enough, he soon developed his lizard fishing technique to the point where he could fool them with his lures. And he forgot how silly he looked out in the desert in his fly fishing gear so far from the nearest stream or river. He was so caught up, so captivated by what he was doing. One day, he was out in the desert fishing for lizards as usual. And what should happen? Well, along comes the state trooper. He tried to explain to them what he was doing, that it was all perfectly normal. But they thought he was so strange and off base that he wound up spending the night in jail. Some lizards have no legs. Those with ears are called legless lizards. Those without are called snakes. Whew, you know, it's warm out here in the desert. I think the desert heat's starting to get to me. I just saw a cactus that looked like a giant one-eyed green duck. I don't want to give you the impression that all lizards live in the desert either, you know. You can find lizards, as I mentioned before, all the way from southern Canada down through the U.S. and into the tropics. And not long ago I was in Trinidad, and boy, did we ever see some neat lizards in the rainforest, in these, you know, very moist, very humid, shady environments, nothing like the Sonoran Desert around me right now, but fantastic lizards. Lizards like, well, there was one I don't know exactly what it was, but it was part of the iguana family, and it had the coolest eyeballs I've ever seen, because just like an African chameleon, which is also kind of a lizard, the two eyes were on sort of turrets, and they could look in different directions uh, independently. Can you imagine how neat that would be if you could, you know, look over here with one eye and look over there with one eye and swivel your eyes around, and you could get, like, twice as much looking done in the same amount of time. And then when they want to look at something carefully, like a bug to grab, they just focus both eyes forward and go for it. Very interesting. At night, there were geckos, of course, in the hotel. Every tropical hotel you will ever stay in in your life is going to have geckos in it. This was a great place for geckos. There were 
while it was one species of quite typical sticky-toed gecko with you know, fantastically weird pupils in its eyes that the pupil, instead of squinching down to one little black dot like ours does and just about every other animal on Earth, it squinches down to four in a row. And you have to wonder what the heck they see through four independent pupils. Very strange. And what else did we... Oh, and then there were some other smaller geckos, one with big chalk glands on its cheeks. These chalk glands uh, are used to to uh, store the calcium that then gets into the eggshells because the eggshells of geckos are, are hard, not leathery like most other lizards. Oh, I could talk about these Trinidad lizards for hours, but I'll finish up by telling you that we also saw some fantastic relatives of the whiptails, the biggest members of their family, the Taid family. Um, one of them was, well, I don't even know what it was called either. It was a lovely sort of brown thing with spots. And the, uh, the very biggest was a tegu. The golden tegu is a great big carnivorous lizard. It, uh, it's a very smooth lizard, a beautiful lizard. You see them sometimes in pet stores. People keep them as pets. I had one when I was a kid. It died of pneumonia. And apparently they die of pneumonia quite often, which is one good reason not to keep a uh, golden tegu for a pet. But the wild ones, absolutely stunning. Beautiful, great, and you know, a forked tongue, their tongue comes out like a snake's. Very much like the monitor lizards of the old world, but let's not dwell on that. Anyway, there you go, proof positive that there are other places for lizards other than the desert. And a rainforest is a pretty lizardy place too. The largest living lizard is the Komodo dragon, which can be over three meters long and weigh up to 150 kilograms. Well, as usual, we ran out of time long before we ran out of lizards, but I hope you'll be able to get out and do some lizard watching yourself. Find your local lizards, or if you don't have lizards where you live, travel to some lizardy place like this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can't, how can you help but like lizards? They're so neat. I think I like them because of their outlook on life. They have that, that sort of at home in the heat, they've got a timeless gaze. It's like lizards have been around since the days of the dinosaurs and they've seen it all and they just look at you with that sort of, I'm a lizard look. You know what I mean? I'm a nature nut, not a lizard, and I hope you are too. See you later. Try this, it sort of sets your mind at ease. Same time each and every week, uncensored and uncut. No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut.